Let's start with the middle question on page five. Why don't you describe in words what would happen here? Just outline in words what the mechanism would look like. Um, well, we just kind of did it, right? I think that the Brahmi would be. Oh. For this one. Oh, okay. So Sorry. this is actually quite different from the NBS case. Yeah, I was This is something we've seen in a previous Sorry. session. Sorry. Yeah. So on this one, it's just your basic um, addition. So what would happen first? First, um, an arrow tail would go from the double bond to the hydrogen. Okay. And Where does the carbocation end up? Carbocation ends up on the tertiary component, okay. and the hydrogen will end up on the other one. Very good. And then? And then the bromine's going to come in the negative tail to the positive head. Nice. And it is not stereoselective, so that's our answer. Okay, very good. So here's two examples that we don't want to confuse with each other. Yep. Both of them starting with the same starting material. NBS gives you a radical halogenation reaction that attacks the allylic carbon. Hydrobromic acid gives us a uh, addition reaction with uh, normal double-headed arrows like we talked about when we went through the alkenes chapter. So is that Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Markovnikov. All right, and then the last example is what would happen if we used peroxides. Okay, well, I'll walk you through that. First of all, what is a peroxide? A peroxide is when you have two oxygens bound to each other. So this is the general formula for a peroxide. Something, an oxygen, another oxygen, and an R. In the previous session, we were looking at hydrogen peroxide. We didn't actually draw it out, but that actually had two oxygens bound to each other. All right, the first thing that's going to happen here, it turns out that the peroxides can be used as radical initiators. So uh, those students uh, were covering this reaction in their alkenes chapter, but you're covering it in your radical chapter. You can see why it could go in either the radical chapter or the alkenes chapter, because it has radicals, but it's also attacking an alkene. Okay, well that's good, because we won't have too much time to go into the details, but we can review what you saw in the video. So here's our initiation. Um, now these are very reactive. Does this need light? In order, I would think that the peroxide would need light or heat to split, but he didn't actually mention that here on the page. So uh, maybe I can look in the book. It usually show light or heat for the peroxides. They're not showing light or heat here. Maybe it's so easy for a peroxide to form a radical that you don't need it. Okay. No. Now the peroxide attacks the HBr. Peroxide going to attach to the hydrogen or to the bromine? The hydrogen. Oh, that's right. Um, I was just going to say that you basically have to just have that memorized. Oh. But anyway, okay. you actually can kind of figure it out maybe if, if you look at uh, bond association tables. But anyway, we'll just memorize. This is also considered an initiation step, even though. It's going from a radical and a non-radical to another radical and a non-radical. It's still initiation because we didn't care so much about this peroxide radical. What we need is the bromine radical. So mm -hmm. this is another initiation step. This is the first time we've seen two initiation steps.
Now the bromine is going to attack the double bond. Very important that we don't forget, we can't leave one of the electrons stranded in the double bond. So that's going to have to form an unpaired electron. And this arrow shows that we're forming a bond here to the bromine. This is propagation step one. <coughs> now we tack another hydrogen bromine. Step two. Okay. Uh, and then what is this bromine radical going to do? Well, notice that a bromine radical is the product of propagation step two, but it's also the starting material for propagation step one. So we can go back and do another propagation step one. Here's where we get the chain reaction again. This is another chain reaction. We can repeat these two propagation steps many, many times. That's why this is considered initiation still, even though it's the second step, because this is not going to get repeated. We have to do this once, and then we do this once, and then we can do these two things billions of times. Wouldn't we do propagation step two as propagation step one, because propagation step one is always to take the hydrogen? That was for a different reaction. Oh, so it's not always that way? Although, um, yeah, this is a different reaction. How is that different? That was when we were looking at radical substitution. Okay. Remember that in radical substitution, we had to remove a hydrogen sure. and replace it with a halogen. Mm -hmm. But now we're learning radical addition. You see how this is really an addition reaction because we're adding two things. We're adding a hydrogen and a bromine to remove a pi bond. Um, so what we learned for radical substitution, that slogan isn't going to carry over anymore. We just have to learn this as a new mechanism. Um, here, we're not, we're not removing any hydrogens. We're not removing hydrogen first or second. Um, we're adding a hydrogen and a bromine. Okay. And because we started with the bromine radical, the bromine adds first. Now here's the key. How did I know that the bromine was going to attack the bottom carbon and not the top carbon? This is the key regiochemistry. Why does the bromine end up attaching to the bottom carbon and not the top carbon? What would be bad about attacking the top carbon? Why is this a good intermediate to have formed? Oh, because it wouldn't have formed a radical on the tertiary carbon. That's right. If the bromine had attacked on the top carbon, the unpaired electron would be here on the secondary carbon. We want to form the more substituted radical. And it can form resonance there, right? Now, this picture has no resonance because there's no pi bonds left. Oh, okay. Resonance oh, right. has to involve pi bonds. I was thinking you could, never mind. Yeah, here we have no resonance because we're destroying the pi bond. We don't want to confuse this with our allylic halogenation where we kept the pi bond. So it's really um, you can see how it's easy to get these different reactions confused with each other. So that's why I have them all on the, on the board here at the same time. 